Ooh wee! <laughs> <laughs> Wrapping it up Thursday here on the vlog, Kalani and the Prince slowly creeping our way down Main Street towards Bryant Denny Stadium for Saturday night's matchup. But you know what? I have the security in knowing that this team will be prepared. That'll be a great selling point there, Prince. When you talk about LSU's run game going up against the front seven of Alabama, I thought I'd throw back Thursday conversation oh, with, with, with Rohan Davis this morning. Everybody get your See you guys on. later. Later, Take Chester. Care, Chester. All right. Bye. Ladies, he is off the market. Off the market. Off the Facebook market. Facebook official. FBO. Look, but don't touch. No request. Yes. You can look at the chest hair, but you oh, can't touch the hey, chest hey, hair. Hey, hey, hey. Luxurious. Um, Rohan like, uh, Davey this morning was great. It's like a bearskin rug. We, we, uh, we remembered uh, the 2001 game over in Tuscaloosa where uh, Davey and Reed just, uh, they still talk about it today as one of the dominating passing performances in college football history, especially in the SEC, and without question in LSU. Davey, the only passer in college history, or in LSU history, to throw for 500 yards that came against Alabama in that 21, uh, 2001 matchup. Reed had 19 catches to hear him tell some stories about that day. Uh, was was cool on radio. Yeah, it was very cool on radio. Nice to talk to him about the, about that. Also, nice to hear him. You know, uh, he's still dialed in. He's still yeah. he's talking yeah, yeah. about Brandon Harris and what LSU's offense could do here. So it's definitely worth your time to go check it out on the podcast. And, and then we talked uh, to David Patrick and, and Benny Simmons is going to open up his LSU career tomorrow night. It won't go in the record books because it'll be an exhibition game. But he'll be wearing the he'll be wearing the colors and he'll be wearing his jersey for uh, for the Tiger basketball program as they open up tomorrow night versus Southwest Baptist. Uh, with the high school games being moved around, looking forward to going in yeah. there and watching some basketball. What do you make of Hornsby missing the first four weeks here? Because if you look at the first month of the season, they got some games where they could definitely use him from a chemistry standpoint sure. to see where they can play, but they may need him. They're definitely going to need him in Brooklyn, right? Well, you, you would you would think, but I also look at it from this is if if you're going to have an injury yeah, to a no, starter, no, no. you want it to be one of your, your your wing guys, your two or your three. LSU's got some depth there. Uh, Blakeney was always going to start the two Hornsby at the three. Now Jalen Patterson's going to come in and play a little bit more there. You got a lot of options uh, ac across the board there. Uh, me personally. I know that the way college basketball is, you want to make sure that you've got everything together for like the end of January and get that push together. Yeah. Craig Victor not playing, Keith Hornsby not playing. It's not going to be good. You may lose a game or a game or two that you thought that you were going to win, mm -hmm. but what it, what, it will, what it will end up doing is it will give you some more experience for these younger guys and help these guys kind of build their identity and you know that you have more options when Victor and Hornsby come back in December. Johnny Jones, David Patrick is with us this morning. Um, those guys picked up two more commitments, junior college uh, teammates, big 6'10 forward and a 6'4 guard yesterday. Still room here in this 2016 class with Wade Sims of University High and Skyler Mace, formerly of U High, now up at Finley Prep in Nevada. Uh, there, there's still some numbers to, to, to play with here in this 2016 class, but on the heels of 15, everybody talked about with Benny, Samson, and of course Blakeney, you had to capitalize off of that and continue to bring players in. Yeah, and again, you know, you're, you're talking about this this recruiting class, the potential to get to six guys. LSU's one under the, the, the limit for scholarships right now. Uh, Hornsby and Josh Gray are going to be seniors. Ben Simmons is going to be leaving for the NBA. And you have the opportunity there with uh, which would be your, five, your your fifth guy or your sixth guy, Tim Quarterman and Antonio Blayton yeah. leaving for the NBA. You could potentially bring in six guys here. Four commitments that will all sound in the early period here. They're, they got uh, Kieran Hayward, who's an Australian national 6'6 guy who's on campus right now for an official visit. And I think that they're in on a couple of more national guys that LSU deliberately has kind of kept yeah. it on a down low here because, again, they, they know that they're competing with a lot of other people one of the things you saw last year with Ben Simmons and Antonio Blakeney was that other teams would start coming in and taking shots at LSU. This coaching staff is really good at, at, at kind of flying under the radar and going in there in a little stealth bomber. You may be able to question some stuff in game with this staff, but you can't question anything with the recruiting trail. Not, not, they, not they at clean all. Up. They clean up. All right, uh, Kalani and the Prince vlog today, ESPN, 1045ESPN.com to check out the podcast. Amy Gill cleaned up on the uh, local sports TV game show. She's going to Tuscaloosa for the first time. Football Friday tomorrow. We'll talk about LSU and Alabama in case there's an angle that, that hasn't been covered. Uh, I'm sure we'll find it tomorrow from 7 to 10 at Mike Anderson's. 1045, 1049 ESPN Baton Rouge.